Listen up or run for cover. Bradley Bums. is dropping. Bums. Two things I want to make sure yeah. I ask before you take off because I know you're in a hurry. Number one, PowerPoint slides. Pro or against? Well, uh, pro, however, PowerPoint is a visual aid. It's not the presentation. When I say to clients, how long is your presentation? And they say, 12 slides. I go, ah, you could use 12 slides in an all-day seminar, 12 slides in 10 minutes. It depends how you're using them. The mistake, and please listen to this if you use PowerPoint, the mistake that people make is they start with a PowerPoint. When I say you're putting together a sales presentation, what's your first? Well, we get out the slide deck. No. What you need to do is go to your whiteboard. And most of the companies I work with, you can walk all over, you know, write all over the walls. It's you make a list of everything that is going to go into this presentation, whether it's sales presentation or whatever. What are the key ideas? What are the stories examples? What might be statistics, case histories that would work? That's, you see, the creative process, Brad, is messy. PowerPoint, which I love and use, is tidy. It is the last part of the formula. So on the whiteboard, what's going into this? Then you think, what is the premise, the big idea? And for a sales presentation, the premise, although it's not stated, is your company is better off choosing us as your vendor. That's the subtext. That is the premise. And all the talking points, and as you're looking at putting together the structure, and all the supporting material, it has to prove your premise. So as you put it together, what good opening, closing, What? how can we personalize this? Then I would say from an outline, talk through it with some of your sales team. Does that sound good? Yes. Then you ask yourself, where must I have a visual aid to reinforce what we're saying? Most speakers and some in the corporations, somebody else even puts the PowerPoint together, one that has no understanding of how to structure a presentation or doesn't know what's different about this particular client or prospect. Or there's too much writing. Exactly. So this, you see, if you start with the PowerPoint, you're using it as a scripting aid, not a visual a visual aid. And my clients will say, well, this is a leave behind for people who weren't there. Yes, you need two versions. You want one with all the words. In fact, you'd probably be better off to write a white paper report and just show visuals that are important. But what you do to deliver from, because you are there, is to have talking points, not sentences. Yeah, I think the t- I think the slides help me stay in direction. Yeah, slides are good. But the way I look at it, Brad, if you went without a slide deck, which I've done many times, they'd love you. You could send the slides and not go, it wouldn't have the same impact. The speaker is the most important part of the presentation. The visual aid works for you. Many corporate speakers act as if they are working for the PowerPoint. And when we have personalities, we want people to look at us. So, for example, if I'm quoting somebody and I want it to be in the PowerPoint, so, for example, I tell a story about somebody said Patricia what is the you know this is great he he interviewed me for 30 minutes for a blog post he said this is fabulous I got at least enough content for five or six blog posts but come on tell me the secret the number one secret of giving a powerful persuasive presentation and I said well there's no one secret and then I realized 
Again, a brand new fripicism would fall from my lips. And I said, there is no one secret. However, if there were, it would be that your subject is of interest to your audience. So I deliver it like this and then I put it on the slide because when I deliver the line, I want the audience to look at me and for reinforcement on my pause, I will bring up the quote. Because if I bring up the quote before, everyone's going to look at it. I want them to look at me. Which brings up to another point. On your remote control, you can turn it off or you hit your computer B for black and the screen goes black. I was working with a sales team at Microsoft and you know, I said, well, what have you learned? You know, your questions, comments, observations. And they said, the way you're using PowerPoint is so good. You turn it off when you want us to listen to you and talk with us. And I said, you're Microsoft. You invented this. You were supposed to be teaching me, not me teaching you. But bring the attention back to you by turning off the, the visuals. Oh.